So AMD just dropped this when I was supposed to be heading out the door to get another U-Haul truck to do another load of stuff for my old house, but we need to talk about this. The U-Haul and the move can wait. Uh, playing video games is much more important. Uh, so anyway, AMD just dropped Fluid Motion Frames 2. Yeah, two. But wait, if you're confused, wait, didn't they already have like FSR 3? So a lot of people are still confusing AMD Fluid Motion frames with FSR 3 frame generation. So let's clarify right at the start here once again, these are not the same thing. FSR 3 frame generation is directly integrated into games by game developers. AMD Fluid Motion Frames runs at the driver level on almost, but not quite, every game. You just open up your AMD graphics driver, so you do need a compatible AMD graphics card to use it, and then you just turn on Fluid Motion Frames, and it does frame generation, which is, it takes two frames your game rendered, and it kind of guesses what happens in between uh, to increase motion fluidity. You see more frames, but as with all frame generation technologies, it does not increase the responsiveness of the the game because it actually slightly delays showing you a frame that would have otherwise been ready in order to use that frame as data for that interpolation. So anyway, the point is fluid motion frames isn't, doesn't look as good as an actual FSR 3 frame generation directly into a game because it has access to less game data. However, it is available in more games. So in games that don't offer FSR 3 frame generation, Fluid motion frames would have been the way to go if you wanted frame generation, but now we're getting version number two. And looking at this, this is absolutely massive because this seems to be doing a bunch of the things that people, including myself in their reviews, pointed out were major uh, uh, kind of issues with fluid motion frames uh, in the original version. This is available in a preview driver, which I absolutely will link in the video description, as well as link to the community uh, uh, developer blog post about this technology. But let me highlight two of the biggest new features here. And as you can see in this screenshot uh, from the, the driver where you would enable this, so if you want to enable fluid motion frames too, you open up your AMD uh, you know, software uh, panel, and you can find it in the, the game settings uh, here for AMD Fluid Motion Frames, and you can enable it. But check this out. Now there is a search mode and a performance mode. And this is so cool. So the search mode is doing something that was my biggest complaint, which was with Fluid Motion Frames, unlike actual FSR 3 frame generation, uh, it would sometimes just give up. If there was too much of a difference between the two frames it's trying to interpolate, sometimes it just couldn't get a good quality uh, interpolation in time or at all, and so it just wouldn't do it, which could make the smoothness of the game experience a little bit more jittery at times. And the thing is, the whole point of frame generation is increasing motion fluidity. Frame generation doesn't improve the responsiveness of the game. So the, the two reasons you want a higher frame rate in a game are to increase the responsiveness of the game and to increase the motion fluidity. Frame generation only helps with one of those two things, the motion fluidity, not the responsiveness. So if it doesn't do a good job on the motion fluidity because it just gives up at times, uh, then why are you using it at all? That was my main complaint with the original uh, Fluid Motion Frames. So with Fluid Motion Frames 2, we are now getting Search Mode, which it says improve frame generation quality at high resolutions, and uh, it, it has settings of Auto, Standard, and High. Now my understanding of what this is going to do, if we read this here, is that the Search Mode controls frame generation smoothness by improving how fallback works in AFMF2. Fallback refers to when AFMF frame generation is temporarily disabled in high motion scenes to ensure the best interpolated image quality, which can sometimes cause jitter that impacts the smoothness of the gaming experience. So in other words, what they're saying here is that by adjusting this setting, I think you can uh, allow it to be less likely to disable itself in, in high motion scenes. So uh, again, uh, the developer blog here is saying that in AFMF2, we have made considerable improvements in frame generation by using AI optimization to help develop an updated algorithm. At 1440p and greater, the search mode auto setting automatically selects high mode, which reduces fallback for improved AFMF smoothness. The standard setting is used for 1080p, which is the optimal setting for this resolution. 
We have also improved the overall image quality in AFMF2 for a better gaming experience in any search mode setting when compared with AFMF1. So they're claiming that in all settings, this looks better than AFMF1, and specifically at higher resolutions, it can auto-select the high mode, although you can manually choose a different setting yourself, to, as I understand it, be less likely to give up in those high motion scenes, which, like I said, for me, was the biggest issue with the technology um, in its original version. But not only that, we're getting a performance mode. Now, why would you want this? It says reduce performance overhead for low power devices. And if you look at the settings available here, you have auto quality and performance. So why would you want that, uh, that to happen? So here's the thing, doing frame generation uses up GPU resources, meaning uh, a lot of people have noticed that like frame generation seems like if you're running a game at 60 FPS, for example, and you turn on frame generation, it should double all of your frames and you should get 120 frames per second. But that's not actually what happens. Usually it can happen when you're CPU limited, but when you're GPU limited, which is more likely in gaming, um, when you enable frame generation, oftentimes if you were at 60 FPS, uh, the game might only end up at 90 FPS. Now, why did that happen? What's happening is uh, the GPU is actually having to use resources it was dedicating to rendering the game to now doing the frame interpolation, which means your game might have been able to run at 60 FPS if you're not trying to use frame generation, but the actual uh, rendered frames might drop to maybe 45 frames per second because uh, after having to dedicate some of its resources to frame generation. And then maybe it goes up to 90 FPS because it doubles off of that 45, because it fell back from where it was able before you were uh, to do uh, before you used any resources for frame generation. So what the performance mode is doing here is it's allowing you to go from a quality setting to a performance setting, which is going to use less resources to do the frame generation. Now, obviously, that would also mean there would be an impact to the quality of the frame generation. So, so again, with frame generation, there's that trade-off of uh, latency, right? You're losing some latency, but you're also losing some image quality compared to fully just game rendered frames. Because again, it's an interpolation. It's an algorithm kind of guessing what's happening in between. But if you use a quicker algorithm, the results might be less accurate, but at the same time, you might get more frames. And this would be especially important on low powered hardware, like a lot of AMD's APUs in handheld devices, like the ROG Ally or something like that, or in laptops where you might be running off an AMD APU, or in mini PCs, things like that, uh, or on just weaker, older hardware perhaps. Uh, you might wanna try out the performance setting. So this says the all new setting available for this mode is performance that reduces the overhead of AFMF2 to help make high frame rate gaming experiences more achievable on a wider range of devices. This is especially beneficial when using AFMF2 with integrated graphics cards and is now the default auto setting on supported AMD Ryzen processors with Radeon graphics. So I'll talk more in a second, but I'm gonna scroll down here to, uh, so if you leave things at auto settings, this is what AMD says will be selected. So if you're on a discrete graphics card from AMD's 6000 or 7000 series, then the uh, frame generation mode will auto select the quality mode. But if you are on a AMD Ryzen processor with integrated graphics from either the 7000 series or higher, so seven or 8000 series currently, um, but more to come in the future, it's gonna auto select the performance mode. So your, uh, the quality of your interpolated frames might be less good, but you might actually have the horsepower to get enough of a frame rate boost to be worth even turning on the feature, which was not always the case previously. Uh, the search mode, which remember was talking about the, the fluidity in motion and whether it's more or less likely to give up for both integrated and uh, discrete graphics, looks like at 1440p and 4K resolutions, it's gonna select the high mode by auto select. Uh, and uh, at 1080p resolution, it will select standard. I think because there's more work to do at higher resolutions, it was more likely to give up at higher resolutions. So I think it's using the, the high mode to kind of counteract that at those higher resolutions. So that's pretty interesting, but this is not the only big claim AMD is making with this new uh, version of AFMF2. The other claim that they're making 
is that it reduces latency, not compared to not using frame generation, but compared to using the previous version of AFMF. So this is a first party graph and I do not have the proper latency monitoring hardware to verify it. So take it with a grain of salt, but AMD is claiming 28% lower latency when running Cyberpunk 2077 on an RX 7900 XDX at 4K RT Ultra Graphics preset. When comparing in gray, uh, the AMFF, uh, AFMF version one using anti-lag when compared to AMD uh, AFMF two, sorry, lots of letters and numbers, uh, using anti-lag. So both using anti-lag, which is AMD's driver, label, driver level um, uh, latency reduction technology, uh, and they're showing 28% lower latency at those settings. Now, again, if you just didn't use frame generation, you would probably have lower latency overall. But uh, again, if you're making the trade-off of latency to, to uh, increase motion fluidity, it looks like you're at least uh, you know, putting up less additional latency uh, when using this newer version. They're also showing you uh, playing Counter-Strike 2 uh, using Anti-Leg 2. Remember, Anti-Leg 2 is AMD's, uh, it's not their driver level Anti-Leg, uh, it's the integrated directly into a game version of Anti-Leg, which currently supports Counter-Strike 2, and I think they added it to like one other game recently, maybe it was Dota 2 or something like that. Uh, but the point is not a lot of games support this yet, but they're showing 12% lower latency when using that version of their latency reduction technology. Uh, again, using Anti-Lag 2 on both things, but just uh, the only variable apparently being AFMF1 versus AFMF2. So that's pretty cool. So again, the big issues with frame generation are increased latency, and there looks like they're working to improve that. The image quality, which they're claiming has been improved, and the, the smoothness of the frames, which again, they're claiming to have improved with search mode. So this overall looks like a really high quality uh, update that's fixing a lot of the main issues uh, that we had with the first one. However, they've gone a little bit farther, which is they've also added interop, meaning interoperability, you mean you can use them together, support with AMD Radeon Chill which is another really big deal. Because the thing is, when you're using frame generation technologies, uh, oftentimes you might accidentally go beyond your monitor's maximum refresh rate. And if you do that, if you go beyond your monitor's maximum refresh rate, you could start to see screen tearing and less motion fluidity. In, in, unless you maybe cap frame rates with VSync, but VSync can introduce its own latency. And uh, another option would be to use frame rate limiters, but not every game offers a frame rate limiter directly in the game. So AMD in their own driver software has offered a Radeon Chill, which is a frame rate limiter and can be used as a frame rate limiter. Uh, and so previously though, you couldn't use Radeon Chill at the same time as you were, you, you were using AFMF, but they're adding in interoperability which means that now you can use AMD's Radeon Chill frame rate limiter uh, to set half your monitor's refresh rate in game. And then your graphics driver now through the AFMF can now double that and you'll hit your monitor's max refresh rate without going past it, uh, which should be really cool. Make this technology a lot easier to use correctly. And then they're also saying they've improved uh, support for borderless full screen because the previous version uh, I think wanted exclusive full screen. And they've uh, added support for Vulkan and OpenGL games because again, the previous version uh, only uh, advertised support for DirectX 12 games. And I think a lot of DX11 games worked as well. Um, so DX11 and DX12, but now they're adding in Vulkan and OpenGL. So overall, again, this is a wide range of improvements to the technology. If we look over at their driver notes, uh, it kind of highlights a lot of these main features. So kind of to summarize the updates that we're getting here, they're claiming lower latency and higher performance by uh, AFMF2 enhances fast-paced gaming by significantly reducing frame generation latency and performance scaling through new modes. They're claiming fast motion optimization uh, to enjoy smoother gameplay and higher FPS with improved frame generation consistency during fast motion. They're saying improved borderless full screen support, uh, expanded API support, and Radeon Chill interoperability support. So this is huge, but I noticed another really cool thing down here, multi-GPU configurations. 
So what about the people who have a Ryzen APU, but also have a, a more powerful discrete graphics card? Or what if, what if you had a powerful discrete graphics card and then a less powerful uh, discrete graphics card? So in other words, what if you're somebody out there with multiple GPUs in your PC, even uh, th that, that could theoretically be doing the frame generation? Well, wouldn't it be nice if one of them did the frame generation and the other one rendered the game so you're not using up any of your game rendering potential power uh, on the frame generation? Because remember how I said, you know, you might go from 60 FPS with no frame generation to then using up resources going down to 45 and then doubling that to 90. Well, what if you didn't use up any of your GPU's rendering resources? This says that for any hybrid graphics configuration, AFMF2 will use the displaying GPU for frame generation, allowing the render GPU to focus on the game. So I need to test this myself to verify it, and, and right now I need to go pick up a U-Haul truck. So now is not gonna be the time, maybe I can come back to this and do some follow-up videos. But I'm really interested in, could your integrated graphics card um, be plugged into your monitor and do the frame generation, whereas you're actually rendering the game on your more powerful hardware. And the more powerful hardware is now not slowing down to do the frame generation. And now you're getting a much larger overall frame rate boost because you're not using up rendering resources uh, on the main GPU uh, for, for, for doing the frame generation. And that sounds really cool. So overall, this sounds like a major update addressing tons of issues. There's still a few known issues and some fixed issues and all of that. And honestly, guys, this is just what AMD has claimed. This needs to be validated independently uh, before we get too crazy about it. Uh, but like I said, I need to go pick up a U-Haul truck and finish my move. So I, I just wanted to get this information out there for you guys. I will link this driver release uh, in the video description along with the AMD uh, a blog post about the technology that I was referencing here. So I want you guys to try this out. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section and hopefully when I'm not in the middle of uh, hauling a U-Haul load of stuff, uh, I will have a chance to pop in and get some of my thoughts on camera actually using this stuff because this looks really cool. Again, let me know what you think in the comment section and I hope you all have an excellent day.